Hey folks, welcome to Creative Maple. My name is Nathan DeVouvier. I'm so glad you're joining us here today. Today we are going to be taking a look at this 1412 bandsaw from Laguna. I've been wanting to do a review on it for a while and it just so happens I was working on a project for a friend and the blade broke. It didn't just break, it took the brush that keeps the tires clean with it and destroyed the tires. The tires were old rubber tires, so I wanted to get rid of them anyway and replace them with urethane tires. So I bought two sets of tires. We're going to compare the two sets of tires to see which ones are the better quality and you can be the judge. Well, let's get started. Okay, so I promised a tool review and I really have to say I love this saw. It's a solid tool, especially for what you get in the price range that you're looking at. That being said, there is one thing that Laguna could do to really make this saw stand out among others, and I'm gonna tell you what that is here in just a moment. I wanna thank whoever made the videos for Laguna because the book to put this thing together is absolutely worthless, not worth the paper it's printed on. The videos really help to guide me through the setup process. None of the bags are marked, nothing in the package is marked, and when you go into it, it kind of looks a little bit of a mess. Granted, there are far fewer parts than, say, putting together a table saw. However, it does make it a little daunting when you start to look at that package and you see that nothing is marked on, on the inside. When you buy this saw, make sure that you get the wheels to go with it immediately. It is so much easier to put the wheels on during the initial assembly than it is to try to put them on later. I made that mistake thinking I didn't need the wheels and then when I got it, I thought, wow, it would be really great if I could just move this wherever I needed it to go. You live, you learn. One tool is provided in this package. However, you are going to need a complete socket set in order to put this together. It really does take quite a few tools in order to get it up and running. But once you get it up and running, there's not a whole lot of tuning that you have to do in order to get it to actually work. But there is one major thing that you do have to do in order to make it work the way you would expect a bandsaw to work. And I'm going to tell you what that is here in just a moment. This model includes a tension release lever and also provides glass windows for you to see both the tension gauge and also to see the tracking. The blade installation and the overall setup is pretty easy. There is a lot to love in this particular machine. First of all, I love the cast iron table. It's absolutely wonderful, especially coming from many bandsaws that have had aluminum tables. Cast iron is the way to go. This cast iron table doesn't provide any flex at all, which is exactly what you want out of a, a great bandsaw. The second thing that I love about it is its European design. It has a steel construction, which does not provide the flex that many American models have whenever you're talking about aluminum construction or cast iron construction. It just doesn't have nearly the flex that you would get from those types of machines. And that's also what you want when you're starting to tension a blade, especially a large resaw blade. One other plus with this saw for me was that it came pre-wired for 110. And while I have 220 in my shop, I didn't really want to wire another 220 circuit back to this corner of my shop. So having 110 and having all the power that I got out of this saw with that 110 was absolutely fine with me. If you are wanting to rewire it for 220, you can absolutely do that. I did that with my table saw because I didn't want the drawdown that I was getting on 110. However, I'm not getting any of the similar drawdown that I was getting out of my table saw. So it may not be necessary for you. As for power, this one and three quarter horsepower motor is plenty. It does a great job. Now, you could get the three horsepower model for about a thousand dollars more, but if you can get it done with a one and three quarter horsepower motor, why go up any farther than that? I have done some resawing with this machine already and with a nice aggressive blade, it does a pretty good job. I do, however, have a brand new blade, which I'm going to show in this video, and I'm excited to see if that actually is better than the previous blade that I had on this machine. The last thing I absolutely love about this machine is that it comes in a nice, tight, sleek package that I can move around my shop wherever I need it to go. I didn't start out wanting to move it around my shop, but as space gets a little bit more cramped, I find that I don't use this saw all the time, so when I can put it in a corner nice and neatly, 
it's much better there than it is sitting in the middle of my shop. Okay, so I told you there was one thing about this tool that really frustrated me, and it's something that I think Laguna really needs to address ASAP if they haven't already addressed it. If I hadn't already put this machine down in my basement, I probably would have packed it up and sent it back and asked for another one because this was so incredibly frustrating. Maybe it was just a fluke with my machine, but the lower wheel was completely out of alignment with the upper wheel. It's not the only machine that I'd heard about having this issue, but when it comes to quality control and you're spending this much money for a machine, when it goes out the door, one of the most crucial parts, the alignment of the two wheels, top and bottom, should absolutely be the most important thing before it leaves the factory. So, I spent hours, countless hours, trying to get this lower wheel into alignment with the upper wheel. Yes, there's an adjustment on the upper wheel, but when it's perfectly adjusted so that everything is riding exactly where it needs to be, it was actually riding half on and half off of the lower wheel. That is a huge safety concern and it puts a lot of pressure and tension in strange places on your blade and when you're using large blades under a significant amount of tension and you're doing resawing, that blade is not going to last through all of that flexing. So, I had to do something and it took a long, long time. So, Laguna, if you're watching this, fix it. It's got to be fixed. Um, otherwise, it's a solid saw, and every other issue that I've had with this is merely an annoyance. One annoyance is this lower door. When you want to get to that lower wheel, you actually have to move the fence and unscrew a little door so that it can make it past the knob that adjusts the table. So, Lord forbid, in the middle of a project, you break a blade. The other thing that really bothers me about this saw, and again, it's just an annoyance, it's not a deal breaker, is the dust collection. The dust collection needs two ports. It needs one directly underneath the table where the blade comes through the table and it needs another one down in the lower part of the cabinet. It has one right up underneath the table, right where the blade comes through the table, and that's great. It picks up 90% of the dust coming through. However, it doesn't pick up the really fine stuff that ends up settling in the bottom of the cabinet. And that stuff is the stuff I really don't want in my shop. I probably will go ahead and cut a hole in the back and add another port just for my own safety. But really, honestly, a saw of this caliber needs two ports just like every other saw of its caliber. One other little thing, this saw came with rubber tires. And the rubber tires run even and it ran rough. It just wasn't the smooth running saw that I expected it to be. We're changing that today because we're going to put on our brand new tires. However, you would think that a nice set of tires would come on a wonderful machine like this. So there are just some inconsistencies in build quality or quality control that I think that Laguna could address and really hit a home run with a machine like this. <music> Now it's time to replace these tires. This process can be tedious, but cleaning out the sawdust and debris is a big deal for a bandsaw. It will make both the saw and the blade last longer. If I weren't putting on a brand new blade, I would be cleaning the old blade. Cleaning your blade reduces heat, and heat destroys blades. In the process, I also add a little bit of lubricant. This dry lube is perfect for environments that might attract sawdust. It's always a good idea to take the table off so that you can get a good look at the hard to reach places and lower guides. Like I had said, the brush that keeps the lower wheel clean was messed up when the blade broke. It is held on with two bolts. The bolts were knocked loose when the blade broke. I had to replace them with a couple of eight millimeter bolts. It was a little tight, but with a little patience, I was able to make it happen. Sometimes you just have to think on the fly. And in this case, I had to use a little piece of rolled up electrical tape in order to get that nut to stick on my finger when I was reaching back in in that tight crevice. Now it's time to put on the new tires. Okay, I had planned for this to be a comparison of two different types of tires. I ordered one set from Rockler, which was more expensive, and the other cheaper set from Amazon. The tires from Rockler were of excellent quality, but the cheaper tires from Amazon left a lot to be desired. Both sets were made out of urethane, but that's where the similarities end. 
I paid $23 for the set from Amazon. They arrived in an Amazon package bound with a rubber band, and they had no markings to indicate the diameter or the width of the tire. And this is where the trouble begins. While the diameter was correct, the bands were one inch in width instead of seven eighths. So they were unusable on my 1412 bandsaw. There were other serious quality issues with these tires. The adhesion point between the two ends of the tire are usually heat welded together. Bandsaw tires are exposed to tremendous amounts of centrifugal force. The poor quality of these welds made me doubt that they could have held up to the demands of this machine. Additionally, urethane tires typically have a higher center and taper to the edge. This allows the alternating teeth of the blade to sit properly and allow for proper tracking of the blade through the workpiece. These tires were actually concave toward the middle. Furthermore, the welds were off-center and one tire actually had a slight hump on one of the welds. Basically, these particular tires would never have gone on my bandsaw, even if they did send the correct width. The tires from Rockler, however, had a perfect taper to the edge, a nice thin even weld, and an even thickness throughout. On top of that, they were shipped in a nice container with the diameter and the width marked clearly on the packaging. So, fulfillment probably didn't have to guess which item they were putting in the box. They were a little more than twice as expensive as the cheaper tire. However, every woodworker should be aware of the hallmarks of quality when making a purchase like this. So now we're gonna put on the better quality tires. The directions recommend heating the tires to 120 degrees Fahrenheit in some soapy water. Installing urethane tires is not easy. They are made to fit extremely tight. An extra set of hands might prove useful. However, I really didn't have that option. We had a couple of false starts, but I was able to get them installed in about 10 minutes total. After installing them, I was careful to clean the water off the cast iron wheels. Water and cast iron do not mix. Now that the tires are on, I replace the cast iron table on the trunnion and grab the new blade. I purchased a Laguna Resaw King. This is a three quarter inch variable carbide tooth blade. I'm still not sure it's worth the $150 that I spent on it, but we will soon see. Carbide is a little brittle and can chip if mishandled. So I'm being very careful to avoid any unnecessary contact with the cast iron table or frame. Once the blade is installed, it is important to adjust the tension and tracking. This saw has a nice tracking adjustment with a lock in the back that allows for fine adjustments that should stay in place once they are set. There's a window on the side so you can see the changes as you adjust the tracking. After the tracking adjustment is complete, the guides need to be placed correctly in relation to the blade. This is the first saw I've had with ceramic guides. I like not needing to be careful about the side guides touching the blade, but I'm not sure I prefer the ceramic rear guide to the bearing style. I've noticed that if the weld on the blade has even the slightest irregularity, it will chip the ceramic, exposing the metal beneath. Now that the guides are in place, the saw can be started. Band saws should be pretty quiet machines when they are not cutting. If you hear significant clicking, rattling, or rubbing, this should be a warning that something is not quite right. Check your tracking first, then check the guides. I love this fence. It's nice and tall. Even though it's made out of extruded aluminum, it is rigid enough for the short path that it has to travel through the blade. I chose to test out this blade with a piece of dense, hard maple. This blade is twice as fast as my old blade and tracks better too. I think this blade might be worth the $150 that I had to pay so for So in it. conclusion, I would definitely buy this saw again. It's a solid machine, something that I will likely pass down to my kids. And the things that I don't like are far outweighed by the things that I do. If you are in the market for a machine, you should give this one a look. It's definitely a great saw. And very few saws offer the resaw capacity with a one and three quarter horsepower motor and a 110 volt connection like this one does. Also, it fits in a small footprint, so it's extremely versatile for a small shop. If you're not looking for a new saw and you're just looking for a nice set of bandsaw tires, I hope you will consider the things that we discovered while we were looking at the tires we were going to put on this machine. Not all tires are created equal, and it's really important that you buy tires that will hold up to the demands that you expect. Hey, thank you so much for stopping by. We really appreciate it. If you like this video, make sure you hit that like button and don't forget to hit that subscribe button and make sure you hit that bell for notifications so you're notified every single time we upload new content. We have two different types of content on this channel. We have content for woodworkers and we have content for woodworkers with kids. So if that's something that interests you, you're not gonna wanna miss the things we have coming up. All right, well, until next time, keep making sawdust.